Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Peter and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Professional Linguistic Assessment Board exams, popularly known as PLAB. If you are watching this video, you are a medical student or a medical doctor preparing for the exams or who might have written the exam and just want to hear what the experience of other people who have taken this exam. context. This video is going to be divided into three parts. The first part is going to, I'll talk about the the technicalities of PLAB, so registration, the requirements and all that. In the second aspect, I'll talk about preparations. And then lastly, I'll talk about the general tips and ideas I think you should be aware of if you are going for the exams. While preparing for this exam, I had to seek for advice from many people, both online and offline, my friends who have taken the exams before. And I have aggregated that with my own experience taking the exams to give you this information. So it's both, this, is a, this, is, this is an amalgamation of personal experience, um, the experience of other people so it's actually going to be high if you are new on this channel please like this video and subscribe it helps the video so that many other doctors and students can see this and prepare for their exams appropriately so let's talk about the technical aspects of the PLAB exams to take the exam, you must be a doctor, you must be a doctor who has graduated from a medical school, you must have taken the English test, that's the IELTS, and in the IELTS, you must have a minimum of 7.5, a band 7.5, and that do, that's not just where it ends. You also have to, the minimum score in each of the four categories of the PLAB exams that you can have is seven. So a minimum score of seven across board and then an aggregate score of 7.5. I think you should aim for as high as you can anyway, because, you know, IELTS has diverse uses except the PLAB exams, scholarship applications and um, postgraduate studies also require you to take um, IELTS at least for most of the times. So you need to have your IELTS, you need to have a medical degree, and then you need to show your transcript. With these three, you can open a GMC account, you can log into the GMC website, open an account, put in this, and book a date for your PLAB exams. I can tell you that the PLAB, the PLAB 1 exam is usually booked way ahead of time, so when you are if you want to book the exams, you should book as soon as you can. And when you are choosing a date, it's important that you calculate very well. Assuming you even have all these requirements right now, you want to book a date, you should calculate how many months, you know, be between now and that time so that you can have ad ad ample time to prepare for the exams. We're going to talk about timing and preparation in another sub another part of this video. So you can just um, wait for, for that part. So essentially, that's what you need to prepare. That's what you need to register through the GMC and then to book your PLAB 1 exams. So... Now, to the exams proper, there's, there's 180 questions and you have three hours for these questions. That means you have 180 minutes for 180 questions. That means one minute per question. That already tells you that you have to be on the top of your game during the exams. Let me break this down a little. You have one minute to read, to read the question, look through the answers and shade because the exam is paper based. This means you actually have to be on top of your game in terms of speed. This is not an exam where you sit and relax. This is an exam you sit on the edge of your seats from start to finish. And I can as well tell you that if this is the intensity, this is the intensity of the exam. So you can also prepare yourself mentally for this. This means having breakfast because the three hour exam and it's a long time. This means, you know, dressing comfortably to the exam venue so that you can sit for three hours and write the exam. The average Everybody taking this exam is a doctor, so you're already post-medical school, meaning your last um, medical exam and probably post-internship. Your last exam, your last technical exam was probably your final year exam in medical school, which is probably a year or two years previously. So you have to have that at the back of your mind. It's been a while you took an exam, so you put yourself in an exam spirit when you are preparing for the exam. I'm giving you all this so that you can have a background of how to prepare for the exams technically and mentally more so on the technical aspect of the exam this exam has it covers the whole breadth of the medical curriculum i mean it covers as far back as anatomy all the way to psychiatry perioperative care and statistics so it covers the whole breadth of the uh, medical curriculum i counted individually and there are at least 30 subspecialties so i'm meaning anatomy neurology cardiology obstetrics and gynecology pediatrics statistics epidemiology um ethics so it covers the whole breadth of the medical curriculum so there is no 
part of the medical curriculum that you're not going to actually look at when you're preparing for the club exam. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind also. This also tell you, tells you that the, as the, the, the curriculum for the club exam is actually quite wide. So have that at the back of your mind when you prepare for this exam. Let's talk about preparing for the exam. The first bit is registering for the exam. When you register for the exam, I suggest you choose a date that is not um, early, like you have a three months window to prepare for the exam, a minimum of three months window, that's 90 days to prepare for the reason why is because the syllabus, as I said earlier, is quite wide. You have 30 subspecialties and some of these subspecialties are big, for example, cardiology, for example, obstetrics and gynecology, neurology and all that. So you have to have ample time to prepare. This is especially peculiar if you are a medical doctor who is working full time when preparing for the exam. You are going to have to work and then you'll probably have other things to do with your life, travel, family, and a lot of other things. So it's good to have ample time for preparing for this. Let's talk about preparing materials for the PLAB 1 exams. There are five key materials I think will be very helpful when preparing for the PLAB 1 exam. The first and the most important, in my opinion, is the PLABable app, which is tailor-made for the PLAB exam. The second bit is the PLAB keys. The, pl the PLAB keys is the PLAB keys is a comp compilation of materials that have the most important facts you should know when preparing for PLAB exams. It's, uh, so you have to have that. Thirdly, there are telegram groups and group discussions where um, PLAB keys and PLAB is discussed every day. Those are, that's another important material or preparatory tool you need to have when you know preparing for the exam. Another important material are the recall questions. So candidates who have taken the exams before put um, have an idea where they, the, the questions they remember, they compile them so that you can actually have an idea of what the real the questions are in the previous exams. It gives you an idea and helps you be, to be able to see, to have an idea, a good idea of what exactly the exam you know um, discusses. And then lastly, um, there are the PLAB seminars and PLAB conferences that happen from time to time online. The least valuable material for preparing for the PLAB exams are your textbook. However, if you have, I mean, you can use ChatGPT to go through questions and, you know, to discuss some topics or things that are not so clear. Talking about preparatory materials, let me talk a little bit about the Plabable application. The Plabable application is tailor-made for the PLAB exam. It has subsessions. Part of the subsessions are the categories, the exam categories, where each of the um, subspecialties we talked about earlier, anatomy, neurology, cardiology, all that are discussed. You have clinical scenarios and vignettes, clinical case vignettes, where they ask you questions and give you options. Questions that are structured in such, in the way PLAB exam questions are set. So you go through these categories and some of them have quite a lot of questions. I'm talking 200 questions, 50 questions, 150 questions. So you go through these categories, you look at the questions and then you, you pick your answers. Of course, it's structured as questions. So when you pick your answers, whatever answer you pick, if you are right, you can see the explanation of why you are right. And if you are wrong, you can see the explanation why you are wrong. So the PLAB um, Plabable app is well, very well structured for, for the exam. And I think it's very important to go through this because instead of passively reading your textbook and textbook are the least recommended material for preparing for Plab exams, instead of going through your textbook, you can go through the Plab categories. When you go through the Plab categories, and I think it's important, even if you know the answer to a question, it's important to know why you are correct so that when you see another question that is structured alongside that line, you can know technically when to choose a question and when not to choose that particular option. So the Plab categories is very important. Another source, another part of Plab, um, the Plabable app is the, um, the Plab, the mocks. Now the mocks are designed in the structure of the PLAB exam. So it's 180 questions, and immediately you click to start a mock exam, a timer starts counting down, such that the three hours is simulated with 180 questions, and you can pick your questions, and then at the end of the exam, when you click submit, when you click to submit, it gives you how much, what you have scored in that particular mock that you've taken. It gives you an idea, especially in the distal part of your preparation for the exam. It gives you an idea of how ready you are, and then it sets you into the exam mode in particular. Of course, recall questions are helpful, especially after every exam. So when there is, for example, a May batch of the exam, you can, the compilation of the questions, you can look through so that you can see how well prepared you are for the examination.
but that's so much about exam um, preparing for the exams let me tell you some other gen uh, some other guidelines that will be very helpful when preparing for this exam the first thing i'm going to be talking about in terms of general tips for the, the exam is the, uh, the questions some of the questions are long. You can have a six line, seven line question that has four options that are sentences. And then you have to choose five options that are sentences. And then you have to choose from them all within one minute. So it's a very fast exam. You have to be fast when preparing for the exam. It's important that you're on the top of your game. You read fast, you read carefully, and you choose your answer. So it's a fast exam. The time is just enough. It's just adequate for the exam that's the first and the most important thing you need to know when preparing for the PLAB exam the next part i'll say is the exam is very well invigilated so take away any idea of malpractice from your mind you are probably going to be sitting with strangers you've never met from other countries who are taking the exam as well so take every um, idea of malpractice from your mind the time is too short the people you are going to be writing the exam with are most likely strangers and the exam is paper based so just remove all that from your mind and just prepare that's the best thing you can do for advantages in the exam is to start preparing as soon the questions as are tricky they are tricky such that they will ask you questions and you have to look in between the lines what is the initial step what is the definitive step what is the best step which of these options is the most appropriate so it's not just a recall exam it's an exam that tests your understanding as well even though it's objective and even though it's um, multiple choice questions, therefore objective, you have to still look through very carefully because the questions are technical. about technical questions. You also have to remember to always start from the basics. If they prepare a clinical vignette that is an emergency, don't forget that even if you know that, the def the, for example, you have a tra traumatic brain injury or a fall, and you really think strongly from the symptoms or the clinical vignette that the patient has an epidural hematoma, the definitive is to do a ball hole surgery. Yes, but you must remember that you have to secure the airway of the patient, which is the most appropriate answer, especially when they ask you a question like what is the initial step in management of this patient even though you know the answer you have to remember a b c of clinical management it's very important to have that at the back of your For the mind. medical students watching this all your medical knowledge will help don't skip your lectures follow your practicals in pathology anatomy physiology all your medical knowledge is going to help because the exam, for example, and truly, in, in a way, your practice is going to contain the full medical curriculum. So all, all you have learned in medical school will play a role in this exam. So you have to remember that. I've already said that it covers the whole of your syllabus, from epidemiology to anatomy to vascular surgery. It covers everything. So have that at the back of your mind when preparing for the exam. As well. For those of you that are going to be taking the exams in other countries, maybe you don't have a center in your country or your the center in your country is already booked and you have to take in a neighboring country it's important that you prepare your travel earlier i was in that particular situation and i had to travel to another country to take my exam and i had i had at some point i almost got you know frustrated at, during my travel because my travel plans changed significantly given the economic um turn in my country so you have to have that at the back of your mind if you're going to travel make sure you know the route you're going to travel make sure you know you have an idea of where you are going so that when you go it's smooth the exam is technical already you don't need other logistic issues to give you more problems when going for those of you that are wondering if you are too old or too young to take the exams when i went there i saw just fresh med i made friends with just fresh medical doctors who had just graduated and who were ready to take the exam i also saw older doctors people who had gray hair coming for the exams from diverse background i saw some arab um some caucasians i saw some latinos i saw people from different aspects different parts of the world who are preparing for the exam across different ages so don't let age be a barrier if you want to prepare for the exam even if you don't want to practice in the uk or you don't want to if you just want to take the exam for academic purposes i'm telling you you're not too old to take the exam or too young to take the exam if you are a doctor in preparing for the exam i suggest that you start with your weakest point this means that you start with the subspecialty that you are least familiar with for me i started with ethics epidemiology and rheumatology those are the subspecialties i was not so comfortable with i left um special special um, i left um the categories of internal medicine gastroenterology cardiology i left those 
towards the later part because I'm a little bit familiar with things like that and I've worked in a, a hospital that is, I've worked in an internal medicine department for a year. So I know, I have an idea of, you know, internal medicine, especially, in, you know, particularly. But start with the aspects of the categories that you are not so familiar with. That way you can quickly gain, you know, have an idea of those parts and it doesn't have to, you know, become your preparation does not have to be pressured towards the end of your preparatory period so start with your weakest point and whichever point whatever is your weakest point i suggest you start somewhere around ethics because the ethics of, of practicing in another country is quite different from wherever you are coming from so that you can you know so you can have an idea of what happens there when it comes to clinical for people who are wondering if um group discussions are helpful i think that boils down to you as an individual even your medical school days you were very involved in group discussion and you 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 are happy to study in groups then fine if you are a solo or a lone ranger then also study um solo but i still suggest that whichever way is your strength from time to time join the telegram platform where people that are preparing for the exams are and, and i'll drop a link of the telegram platform here so that you can see other people preparing join them and see how people think see the way people go through um the exam so that you can just have an idea of the people that you are preparing that are going to be taking the exam with, so that you can have an idea and you can go with the herd you know when preparing for this exam isolation total isolation i really don't advise total isolation when also as i said earlier the basics still matter set a goal you have 180 questions maybe you can decide you want to score 150 as a personal goal there is going to be a cutoff mark after every after the exams have been graded there will be a cutoff mark that will be categorized as the pass mark maybe usually it's around 120 or 115 so have a goal for your a personal goal so maybe you want 150 or 130 just have a goal that is significantly that at least is higher than the cutoff point which is the pass point and then at that point you can know that okay my personal plan for this exam is to score 150 and then it guides you and then it challenges you and then you know it helps you also um prepare towards a particular point when you are preparing for the exam when you are going for the exam it's important that you take breakfast it's a three hours exam it's long it's challenging your brain is going to need you of all people know that your brain is going to need glucose in that kind of tense uh, um, environment personally my favorite part of preparation was anatomy and surgery my weakest point was ethics and um, obstetrics and gynecology the last thing i'm going to say up in this video is an accountability partner helps someone you check in with okay where are you now how many over 30 sort of specialties, how many have you done? What is left? Is there any particular challenge you're having? Is there so someone you can you know bounce ideas off when you're preparing for the exam is also very helpful. But that and um statistics and um, the reason why was because I had a deficit and and I have an aversion to those subspecialties sort of initially, even from medical school. But preparing for the exam helped to brush up those um, parts of my knowledge and even made me more confident in those parts of um, medicine essentially is as much as i'm going to be taking um in this video if you are new in this channel please like this video subscribe you can also share with your other our colleagues who are taking the exams and um on this channel i discuss medical stuff um lifestyle a little bit of academics and i think not just a little bit a lot of academic stuff and a lot of technical stuff also on this channel and i'm going to be doing a lot more of that as the year progresses so thank you for watching and um, see you in the next video no, no, no. Put us